Oh, that's right. It's time for our new segment. What's going on, guys? You know who it is. Zeus Cruz of Olympia Multimedia giving you another segment of Get Things Done. In this particular segment, it is uh been requested by several people. They kind of wanted to know the ins and outs of how to create their own or your own multimedia workstation and what's involved with that, uh, the components, the different types of software, hardware, uh, specs when it comes to the actual system or the actual unit, um, what is entailed with that, and things to keep in mind. So let's check it out. We're at the workstation here, workstation Omega. As you can see how it's set up with the hardware. We have the software on the screen. Let's start with the system first. But even before I tell you this for the specs for the system, understand that when you're creating your workspace, your workstation, do your due diligence and do your research and find the software, the hardware that is compatible with you, that makes you comfortable within your space. You're going to see a lot of different videos, including this one, a lot of different tutorials where they're kind of pushing on to you different types of products. And these are the products that you should use. They're pushing them because that's the products that they're comfortable with. In the end, in order to get the best results, the high quality results, you have to be in tune with the equipment, with the software that you're using. And it all starts with research. So I definitely want to advocate that first before we go into anything. Please do your research, do your due diligence, and find the software, find the hardware that's compa most compatible with you or most comfortable with you. As far as the specs for the workstation, in order to uh, make sure that you have the capabilities to go ahead and work within all these different mediums because when it comes to multimedia it's definitely more than one element we're dealing with photography we're de dealing with videography we're dealing with music production we're dealing with graphic design and we're also dealing with a system that allows you to do data management because obviously you're going to be storing different files into different folders um, especially if you're going to be working in and out with a lot of different clients you got to make sure that um, you have a file directory in place so that you can get to your work. As far as the system, as far as the components and the specs that come with that, the particular one that I use is called Acer Aspire. They're, that's their series. They actually have roughly about four or five different models. Um, to me, they're the best. Um, very high quality, very well recommended very well built um i never have any kind of issues with that uh the other workstation we have is also a acer aspire as well um but as far as the specs and we'll give you a reminder later on as you notice the system here first off you want to work with at least one terabyte of a hdd drive of a hard disk drive and at least one terabyte of a SSD, which is a solid state drive, and at least 16 gigs of RAM. The reason why you want to use or at least have them components in your system is because you're dealing with multimedia. You're dealing with high volume files that can get big and they can get uh, frequent as far as... Um, the amount of files and folders that you're going to be needing, especially if you're doing music production. Within your music production, your interface, you have what are called tracks. This is just a quick example. Each track is actually has their own memories. And it's, you're looking at roughly about two to four megabits per track. And depending on what type of producer you are, and you tend to use a lot of tracks in your production, you can see everything pretty much adds up. So you definitely want to have enough of a hard drive that can cover all them bases as far as functionality. 
and have the storage enough to hold these files. So definitely 16 gigs of RAM, at least one terabyte of a HDD, and a one terabyte of SSD as well. You also want a mid-tier graphics card to go along with it, especially when you're doing things that's like video. Because you want to allow yourself to be able to function properly within the timeline, especially if you're going to do some video scrubbing, which is just a fancy term for moving the cursor uh, in different segments along the timeline. Obviously, if you're going to be more uh, particular with your edits, obviously the cover gra uh, color grading, excuse me, the uh, visual effects, the way you position and input your transitions. And then most importantly, the rendering process so that um, the video or the content that you create is uh, fluent and is formatted properly. You're definitely going to need a graphics card that's going to be allowing you to operate at a high level so that you could do all these different functions or perform all these different functions. And then obviously you're going to need a good sound card as well. Again, we'll talk a little bit more, touch base more toward the end of the video. But let's get to here as far as the software needed to go about that should be included with your multimedia workstation. Again, I'm not going to cover too much the hardware. You do need to understand you need hardware to go or accompany the software that you pick. So clearly, if you're looking at music production, as you see here, we have a lot of different uh, equipment here, hardware that deal with MIDI, as far as mix pads, uh, MIDI keyboards, sequencers, uh, devices that are somewhat like hybrid that cover different types of functionalities within the music production. Um, obviously, you'll need an audio interface. If you're looking at graphic design, clearly you're going to need a digital pad. That just makes it easier for you. You could just use your mouse along with your keyboard and create what are called hotkeys, which are just a fancy term for shortcuts on your computer keyboard to access different uh, components. Um, but it's just more better and more easier just to use a digital drawing pad. And obviously, you're going to need some type of microphone, whether it's a condensed, a compressed. This particular case is USB powered to do vocals. So you're going to need the hardware. But just as important, obviously, you're going to need the software. You're going to need some type of platform in order to do your work and do your editing. So most importantly here, let's just start off with the video. The one that I particularly use is called Fillmore Wondershare. And I picked this one because um, the overhead as far as learning it, it's very low. You know, uh, whether you're a novice, uh, somewhat of an amateur, uh, or even if you are an expert in that field when it comes to fill editing, it's just tailored to whatever your skill level is at. It's easy to pick up. It's easy to import different types of media and then include different types of things. A lot of things are just built with the drop and drag. And um, it's just top quality. It is very easy access, as you can see here, to do the transitions, to add your effects. Um, you can even input templates and just work off of there. Um, it's easy to go to your file directory, add more content. Um, your titles, um, easy to manifest different types of, uh, transitions as well. So you definitely want to get a software that allows you to do this. Again, I'm speaking on terms of if you are going in the direction of creating a business for yourself, you have to make it easy access for yourself. You're going to have quite a bit of clients, going to have quite a bit of different projects that you're going to be working on. So you need to tailor and structure the way you design your multimedia workstation to allow you to go ahead and function, create that high quality, but at the same time, kind of move it along, so to speak, 
and able to do these projects in a timely fashion. So here you go with the video editing for videos. Obviously you need something for photos. The one I use is called Luminaire Neo. It's the one I recommend. Um, once again, please, I gotta once again advocate, do your due diligence and research. There is a lot of good ones out there. This particular one, I just feel like gives the highest grade, the highest quality when it comes to the photos. Um, and again, it's just really simple to use, very easy access to go to all your files. Um, I also like to, where it's easy in this example of just adding the different types of effects. As you can see, we're adding layers onto this photo where you have the model in the middle and then you have an image that kind of offsets and overlays in the background. Um, it's just easy to add all these things um, using Luminaire Neo. It's not a lot of having to open up a whole bunch of different folders and just access to here that ends up going to here. It's just pretty much straightforward. Your menu is right here to your right. And they offer a lot of different features and you can just pretty much go straight to work. And again, the quality is, is, is very good. And um, this particular one, they offer either a subscription or you could pay uh, for the licensing, uh, uh, infinite license. So you don't need to work within a, the, the subscription model. So you have that for photos. If you're going to get into graphic design, this is the one that I particularly use. It's called PaintStorm. Again, you want to look for simplicity. There are a lot of software, especially when it comes to graphic design, where they have so many different components and a lot of features that you don't necessarily going to need. So it just kind of makes for a messy workspace when you're trying to construct your design or you're trying to draw out something. Um, it just tends to get a lot messy because there's just so much going on and a lot of it doesn't need to be uh, used. And it's hard for you to kind of filter through everything or at least eliminate the different windows within the interface to kind of get it out of your way so that you can go ahead and have a very fluent uh, workspace. Here, this is what you see is what you get. You know, you have your color palettes, you have your mixer boards over here that allows you to input different types of mediums of art where you're using oil, pastel, uh, oil, pastel, watercolor. If you're just using different types of graphites for your drawings, you can input more than one medium at the same time within your canvas. You just load them up over here into your mixer windows. Um, if you look on your left side, very easy to incorporate blurs, uh, incorporate a, a stabilizer, spacing. Um, if you want to use sort of a grid to kind of scatter and push different elements of your drawing as you're drawing it, you can do that. You notice over here, the, all the multiple types of uh, uh, brushes that you can use. It's just so simple. It's just click and then you go straight to work. And that's just the key when it comes to this for anything that you're trying to do with your uh, multimedia project. You just want to navigate easily and have a, just an easy workflow where you can just get to the point, get what needs to get done, move on to the next project. So I definitely recommend Paystorm. And the overhead for the pricing is very cheap. It's only $20 for a lifetime purchase of the license. So um, you can't beat that, and it offers a lot of features. Um, backtracking real quick to Wondershare. They have a lifetime um, licensing as well, and it will be around $50. So again, everything I'm showing you, too, you get high quality, but it's also cost efficient, especially if you're working on a budget. For music. I recommend that you use a main plugin along with a doll. So in this particular case, what I have open up here is 
Complete Control, which is part of Native Instruments, uh, Complete 14 software suite. And as you notice here as well, it's broken up into different types of programs within the software suite. You got Contact, you got Realtor, you got uh, Machina, Battery. Um, you also have um, Tractor for DJ Pro. If you want to get into like uh, mixing and doing, you know, DJ type content. So it's good to start off with a medium where you can get really good with. I recommend Native Instruments because they have a plethora. I mean, a ridiculous amount of content of different types of sound pools, sound packs that has so many different loops and simps, different types of audio samples that you can incorporate in your music production. You could pretty much make any type of beat, any type of um, background music, orchestrated type music. Um, the possibilities are endless using Native Instruments. Um, so this is the one I recommend. But you definitely want to find one that has a lot of options for you that's cost sufficient. Um, they have different types of pricing when it comes to what type of package you want with Native Instruments, complete control. Um, so they range anywhere from as low as 200 to almost 2000 <laughs> So again, it's dependent on your system as well, uh, how big your hard drive is to allow you to download all these different types of files and programs. Um, but whatever package that you pick, you're not going to be disappointed at all. Another one that I use as well, just to give yourself some options, is Victoria. This particular one is called their Analog Lab D. And uh, again, uh, this is mainly for like a synthesizer if you're looking for that, if you're looking to incorporate a lot of synths or you're going to be working with a lot of synths. In your production, I definitely recommend this as well. This could be incorporated as well with Native Instruments as a plugin. Um, and as you see, it just has a lot of different features on specifics on what you're trying to look for. Again, always remember, especially when it comes to music, allow yourself a lot of options. So when you're looking for that particular one, that particular uh, plugin, allow it so that you can have them functions and a lot of different options. Um, you never want to cut yourself short, especially if you're going to be blending in multiple genres of music. You want to allow it so that um, you know you have the capabilities of doing that. What I open up here is my main doll that I use on this particular workstation. You definitely need a DAW. A DAW is an acronym for a digital audio workstation. Just a fancy term, once again, as I mentioned in previous videos, uh, for music editing software. Um, I love PreSign Studio One. Again, it goes back to the functionality. It's very easy. Um, even somebody who is not familiar with <laughs> music production or editing music, they can... Um, Easily jump on this software and use it. And this is the basic layout for Studio One. It has it broke down to different tabs for specifics. If you just want to do vocals, if you just want to make beats, if you are just editing something that's already been produced and you're trying to add different types of elements into it. Um, that's why I like Studio One. It just, it gives you uh, a better... Uh, organization of the different features and your different files as you see here on the right it provides instruments that affects the loops so forth and so on um, they also have their own cloud as well so you don't have to even use the storage that's on your unit you can use the cloud that they provide within the software to store all your files and the beautiful thing about this door it allows for third-party plugins and VSTs so you can use this and import native instruments. You can import a Toria or any other plugin that you are that you prefer. You can utilize that in here. That's very important when you're looking for a doll. 
a digital audio workstation, you have to allow third-party plugins because what they have on stock, they may not fit your project for whatever specifically you're trying to add on there. So again, give yourself options. And you want to tailor the software that you use to allow you as the content creator to have options. And then last but not least, you need data management. You need some kind of file directory that's accessible. The one that I particularly use is Google Drive. Obviously, I'm working on a Microsoft Windows 11 operating system. And obviously, they have their own as well, OneDrive. But I particularly use, use Google Drive. Um, it's pretty much self-explanatory, straight to the point. Um, you can make unlimited uh, folders um, for you to get at least 100 gigs worth of space. It only costs you $1.99 a month, which is basically practically free, uh, which is a good thing as well for, again, for people who are looking to be cost efficient when putting together their workstation. And uh, I've never had an issue with Google Drive. And you can pretty much access it everywhere. I had issues personally with OneDrive through Microsoft, trying to access it on multiple different devices if I'm trying to do projects on the go. And uh, it just didn't work out for me. It was just uh, too much of, um, too much tedious type of things that I had to do just to access just one folder or one file. Google Drive, I never had a problem. If you are working on a Microsoft Operating system, you're working off of Windows. Um, they do have one offered through their store, and it's called Client for Google Drive, and it allows you to access your Google Drive without having to go through all the tedious, again, of going through multiple different types of apps, applications, just to get to a folder on your Google Drive, if you decide to use Google Drive. But again, it's important, whatever you use, that it has to be accessible, easy to access, to get to, um, so that you can, you know, start your workflow, start your work process. So, there you go. So, let's check it out over here. Just to provide for y'all some quick reminders as I... Take y'all to the whiteboard. Reminders to remember. Number one, workstation specs. Remember, at least one terabyte of an HDD, which is a hard disk drive. One terabyte of an SSD, which is a solid state drive. And 16 gigs of RAM. It's very important. These three are probably the most important when you're talking about just the hardware part of the, the workstation, putting that together. Um, because you're going to need a lot, a good size hard drive to accompany the drive that's on your system because the files that you're going to be creating, whether you're doing photos, videos, uh, music, they could tend to get large at times. And then you're going to need the 16 gigs of RAM. RAM is read access memory. You're going to need that to function at a nice pace where there's not a lot of lag. You're definitely going to need a mid-tier GPU, which is a fancy term for the graphics card. Uh, this is very important, especially with videos. Uh, specifically for the rendering, when you're ready to format your finished product, um, you're definitely going to need a good graphics card that allows you to kind of streamline that process uh, more fully and with not a lot of like interruptions, not a lot of, again, lag or discrepancies. A sound card operating at 96 to 192 kilohertz at a 24 to 48 bit format. So when you're looking for your unit, if you're designing stuff from scratch and you're trying to create your uh, workstation and get uh, your whole computer system, these are just components that you need to look for, which they usually have an outline on the overview when you go to buy it, whether you're going to Amazon, eBay, wherever you're going to purchase it. They usually have this outline on what the components are within the system. 
these are the ones that I recommend for you when you're looking for your uh, computer unit. Number two, the software. Remember, to create a multimedia workstation, you need something for photos, you need something for videos, you need something for music production, you need something for graphic design, and then last but definitely not least, something for your file directory and data management. Remember, key point, make it accessible. Especially if you're trying to start a business, you have to find a way to access your files quickly and in a timely fashion. You're dealing with clients. You're dealing with people who are paying for your services. So they're going to want the product that they outline through you in a timely manner. So you need to access this, have the, the ability to access these files in a quick fashion. And just a quick side note, with the music software, to a, whatever that you decide on, it needs to allow third-party plugins and VSTs and the ability to use different types of media. Not all softwares do that. So again, that's why I always advocate do your due diligence, do your research, really read through what that program has before you make your decision. The videos are also the same thing to allow different types of effect plugins just to give you more options. Remember, that's the mo that's probably one of the most important criteria when it comes to multimedia or creating your multimedia workstation. Allow you as the creator to have options. And then last but not least, when you're doing your photos or your videos, incorporate Pexels, Pixabay, Canva, Adobe Express. These are the ones that I personally use, but there are plenty of that's out there. Again, do your research, and you can utilize these, again, in your videos or your photos. These are stock footage that's royalty-free, so you don't have to get caught up in all that copyright infringement and whatnot, and they're great for just putting them into your projects and then you can manipulate them and incorporate them in your project as you see fit. So that's it. I hope this video was informative to you. Um, I definitely recommend it. Even if you're not trying to make it a business, uh, it's just, it's fun. It's great um, to go about and create a workstation for yourself that you can be creative in one in, in more than one medium and incorporate all these different elements there's so much things out there so go out there check them out and utilize them and uh that's it so you know what it is it's zeus cruise olympian multimedia and uh i guess the only thing left to say is, is um get things done <laughs> check y'all later